We shall brief you about our growth as a renowned institution. The International Institute of Information Technology in Bangalore was established in 1999 jointly by the government of Karnataka and the IT industry with a mission to build on the track record set by India in general and Bangalore in particular to enable India to play a key role in the global IT scenario through a world-class institute with a focus on educational research, entrepreneurship and innovation. In 2005, the institute was recognized under Section 3 of the University Grants Commission as a deemed to be university in the de novo category. Another evaluation by the National Accreditation and Assessment Council in March 2014 awarded IIIT Bangalore an A, the highest grade. Ladies and gentlemen, now when the academic procession enters, uh, all of you are expected to rise and uh, once everyone is seated, only then uh, you are expected to seat. After the academic procession uh, comes here and takes their seats, the convocation ceremony will officially open.
Gentlemen, the academic procession has started. The academic procession is about to enter. May I request you to please rise to welcome them.
kindly take your seats. I now call upon our students Trelam and Lasya for the invocation. Raksha will accompany on Veena and Jayati will accompany on keyboard. Pradangam will recording will be by our alumnus Komarish. This means, O oh dear self, do not stop anywhere. Do not be bounded by the narrow walls. Never be content in reaching the finite. Be eternal and transcend all the boundaries. On that note, it's my great pleasure to welcome our esteemed guests on the dais and all of you to the 19th Convocation of IIIT Bangalore. On behalf of the chairman, members of the governing body, the director, faculty, staff, students, and alumni of IIIT Bangalore, I welcome our chief guest, Professor Ashutosh Sharma, and our guest of honor, Mr. Anand Chandrasekharan. Professor Ashutosh Sharma has been the secretary, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, since January 2015, where he helped initiate several new programs. To mention a few, infrastructure and human capacity building, innovation and startup, 
R&D in Advanced Manufacturing, Industry Academia Cooperation and others. Professor Sharma received his PhD from the State University of New York at Buffalo, his MS from the Pennsylvania State University and BTEC from IIT Kanpur. He has been an Institute Chair Professor and the Head of Chemical Engineering at IIT Kanpur. He is also the founding coordinator of Nano Science Center and Advanced Imaging Center at IIT Kanpur. Professor Sharma's research contributions are highly interdisciplinary and has published over 340 peer-reviewed papers, filed over 15 patents, and mentored a successful nanotechnology startup. Professor Sharma is a recipient of numerous honors and awards, such as the TWA Science Award, Bessel Research Award, Bhatnagar Prize, Homi J. Bhava Award, Meghnath Saha Medal, and the Lifetime Achievement Award of the Indian Science Congress, to mention a few. He is an elected fellow of various national and international academies. It's our great pleasure to welcome you, sir. I would now like to introduce our guest of honor, Mr. Anand Chandrasekharan. Mr. Anand has worked on many products globally with over 10 million active users across commerce, messaging, financial services, and content discovery. Most recently, he was director of platform and product partnerships for Messenger at Facebook, leading the growth of the platform to 250,000 plus active developers. He was previously the chief product officer at Snapdeal and Bharti Airtel, running new product developments such as Wink Music and led the e-commerce business. Earlier, Mr. Anand was the senior director for search and mobile with Yahoo. Previously, he co-founded AeroPrice, which became the most deployed solution worldwide for mobile service management. Mr. Anand holds an MS degree in electrical engineering from Stanford University and a BS degree in Communication Engineering from PhD College of Technology. In 2010, he was named Young Global Leader by World Economic Forum. In 2016 and 2017, Anand was named the Fortune's 40 under 40 list in India. With great pleasure, we welcome you, sir. I now welcome Mr. S. Gopal Krishnan, the Chairman of the Governing Body of Tripleity Bangalore. I also welcome the members of the Governing Body, the General Body of Tripleity Bangalore. I would like to extend a warm welcome to the Chairman of the Senate, our Director, Prof. S. Sadagopan. It's also my pleasure to welcome distinguished academicians from all the institutions, CEOs and executives of IT companies, officials of the government of Karnataka, the press, faculty, staff, students, alumni and all the invitees. Finally, this event is for the graduating students who we are happy to send to the world as trained and motivated citizens. So I heartily welcome the graduating students and their proud families. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. I request our Chairman, Mr. S. Gopana Krishnan, to declare the convocation open. I declare the 19th convocation of the International Institute of Information Technology, Bangalore, open. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you, sir. I request our director, Professor S. Sadagopan, to present the annual report of the institute. Good morning. Chief Guest of the Day, Dr. Asutosh Sharma, Secretary, Government of India, Department of Science and Technology, Guest of Honor of the Day, Mr. Anand Chandrasekharan, Chairman of the Governing Body, Mr. S. Gopalakrishnan, other members of the Governing Body, members of the Senate, my distinguished faculty colleagues, colleagues from other institutions in Bangalore, my dear students, and most important, the graduating students and their parents, alumni, staff, distinguished guests, members of the media, and ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 19th convocation of IIITB. It's a moment of joy when 277 of our students, 7 with PhD degree, 5 with Masters of Science degree, 162 with 2 year MTech degree, 10 with MSc in Digital Society, 60 students with dual degrees, and 33 students of the sponsored MPEG graduate today. Convocation is a celebration of success, a celebration of success of the graduating students. Please join me in congratulating the class of 2019 students and their families. I do not want to stand in the way of our graduating students getting their degrees, yet it is a customary to present highlights of the institute for the year. Please permit me to do so. First, on students' front, Vinay Chandrasekhar, the fourth year IM Tech student, is currently at Penn State thanks to the prestigious SN Bose Summer Fellowship. Nine of the graduating IM Tech students will be pursuing their PhD degree in prestigious universities around the world, Aarhus in Denmark, Toronto, Waterloo and Menkil in Canada, University of Florida, Maryland and Columbia in USA, NUS in Singapore and Schema in Paris. One of our student, Ahmed Shyam, got admission in top US schools, five of them, UC Berkeley, Columbia, CMU, UCLA and UDAP. He decided to go to Columbia. Please join me in congratulating the other three students, Ashish, Spurti and Janak Sharma and their advisors, Professor Subhajit Sen, Subir Roy and Nandita Rao for winning IEEE presentation competition at IAST Truandrum. Janak also got MyTax Global in Research Internship at Concordia in Canada currently this summer. On the faculty front, Professor Dinesh Babu was invited by Professor Marianne Mast, credited to be one of the top 50 living psychologists today, to visit University of Luzon and spend the summer 2019 as a visiting professor. He will be back tomorrow. IIITB has been invited to be one of the 20 global institutional members of the Digital Fortune Society, Future Society, Think Tank, under the aegis of Mobile World Capital in Barcelona. Professor Balaji Patsarthi, Amit Pradash, Janaki Srinivasan and Sridhar Vadarajan will serve on the working groups that generate the thematic vision statements for 2030 for governments and industry to create a more inclusive digital society aligned with the Millennium Development Goals. Professor Madhur Rao was one of the 20 delegates invited to visit Israel under the Discover Israel Research and Innovation Program in September 2018. His product prototype Maitri developed along with Dr. Vikas of Nimhans was launched by the DG of Bureau of Indian Standards, DG of Indian Council for Medical Research and Director of NIMHANS on 7th June 2019. Thanks to Professor Tangaraju, 35 of our students had active interaction with the open source community 
As Triple TV was an institutional partner for the Open Source India Conference 2018. We'll continue in the year 2019 also. Professor Minashi Dizusa and Srinath Srinivasa joined the editorial board of Sadhana, the science journal of the Indian Academy of Sciences. Video can, founded by our faculty colleague Professor Manish Gupta, was the best Indian AA startup of, of, of the year from NASCOM. He got awarded March, March 2019. Finally, join me in congratulating Professor Sridhar for drafting the Karnataka Cyber Security Vision document as a member of member secretary of the committee of for the Knowledge Commission of the Karnataka. Government of Karnataka approved the recommendations of the report and gave in principle approval for rupees 80 crores grant for the project. So I am skipping many others because of time. On the alumni French, on this day we are also kind of crossing an important mark. We are crossing the 3000 mark. By the end of the day, we would have graduated 3007 alumni. Over the last 19 years, more than 50 of our 3,000 strong alumni have ventured into entrepreneurship. Some of the startups founded by Triple ITB alumni include User Ready in Analytics, Exotel in Telecom, Watfix in Product Support, Compute IO in HPC, Fuzzle in Agriculture, and Serve Happiness Foundation in Social Sector. Please join me in congratulating our alumni entrepreneurs who have made their mark and doing justice to the institute. Special mention must be made of Karim Bhatti of our very first batch who got a Series B funding of Rs. 92 crores in February and Watfix founded by, founded by him. Founded by another alum of the 2012-14 batch Jyotishka Kasen Bish and the other co-founder happens to be from IIT Kanpur and it's called Krishi Hub that is building a technology driven ecosystem for the Indian farmers and featured in Economic Times in February 2019. Institutionally, along with IBAB, the Institute for Biotechnology and Applied Bioinformatics, IIITB has started the country's first one year long special program a postgraduate diploma in Big Data Biology. Funded by DBT, the Department of Biotechnology, based on their RFP, DBT rated our proposal to be the best among the 300 proposals received from across the country. The Institute is hosting MOSIP, the Modular Open Source Identity Program, an open source digital identity software solution created as a public good for the world at large by way of India's digital diplomacy. Government of Morocco will be the first user. They expect to go live by the year end. The kickoff event attended by a team from Rabat on 27th August 2018. We expect to have another meeting the next week. 659 students of the highly successful online education program on analytics and machine learning jointly executed with UpGrad graduated on November 24, 2018. Another 1,094 students will be graduating this Friday, the 12th of July. At the Innovation Center, we collaborated with Samsung for five months for a Samsung Global Startup Acceleration Program with early startups from India, Indonesia, Malaysia, and South Africa, and a week long boot camp at Tupri TV involving 45 Samsung engineers from South Korea, 10 Samsung engineers from India, and 45 innovators and entrepreneurs. As a follow up, Samsung is offering a CSR grant to the three winner startups, one of them our own. Other important Activities of the Institute include, as part of the research in air, the idea of Dean R&D, 
Sambar, a weekly talk series was started this year to showcase our research projects within Drupal ITP community. By end April 2019, the first round of Sambar had featured 54 talks. We also reinitiated the Bangalore and IT lecture series, which we used to do between 2002 to 2007 with Professor Marianne of Luzon in March 2019. We just concluded the three week long ACM summer school on theoretical foundations of machine learning. Earlier, we did a winter school on digital and the everyday from codes to cloud. We hosted the TEDx for the second time, a Ramanujan conference on mathematics and IT for the eighth time, and HP Aruba Network University for the tenth time. We continue to mentor the Myanmar Institute of Information Technology at Mandalay for the third year. We hosted Yamini, a dawn to desk musical program under the Speak Mackay brand banner, coinciding with Karnataka's Rajotsava Day, that is November 1st, for the second time. We are grateful to Dr. Sidharam Jindal for instituting the gold medal, that is the tenth medal which is being distributed today. I am not listing many other things due to paucity of time. We continue to attract outstanding faculty members and scholars from around the world. Professor Vital Prabhu from Penn State was a Fulbright Scholar for the year. Professor Binod Reddy and Professor R.T. Adri have joined as faculty members. And Mr. Tridhi Bhai Chaudhary joined us as the lab head of the GOK funded Minro project after a very distinguished career at Adobe. We had some very interesting visitors, just a handful of them. One is uh, His Excellency Yadavir Krishnadatta Vodayar of Mysore on May, Dr. Srikant Narayan of USC, Professor Hanan Samets from Maryland as an ACM Distinguished Public Lecture Speaker, Christian who heads the IBM Global Ambassador for Quantum Computing, Dr. Tom Lee, CEO of Quanzer, Dr. K.M. Abraham, IAS, the Chief Secretary of Kerala, and the directors of IIT Hyderabad, Triple IT Badodra, Triple IT Panchipuram, Professor Kamakoti of IIT Madras, and Dr. Anandan of Badwani Foundation. Last but not the least, all through the 19 years, we have been successful in placing all but a handful of students on the day of the convocation. This is significant as our academic year gets over by June 30th and all of our convocations happen on the first or the second Sunday of July. I am happy to share that this year is no different. All but nine of the 277 graduating students have been placed in companies or pursuing higher studies as of today. 63 companies of which 60% are IT product companies, nine from finance companies and 10% from startups. The institute will continue to work hard to play the remaining nine students also. We are grateful to our friends from industry for their continued support on this friend. Finally, institution building is an act of faith, but for the trust-based relationship between the governing body and the executive, Triple ITB would not be what it is today. We look forward to such continued support from the management, all sections, faculty, students, staff, alumni, funding agencies, government, industry, and civil society. We have a long way to go, but our baby steps in the past 19 years are reassuring. Congratulations once again to the graduating batch. Welcome one and all, and thank you. Thank you, sir. I request our director, Professor S. Sadhagopan, to kindly seek permission from the chairman, Mr. S. Gopalakrishnan, to present the students of the graduating class. Sir, I have the honor of requesting you to permit us to present the qualified students of the PhD, Master of Science by Research, MTech, MSc Digital Society, and Integrated MTech programs for the award of the degrees. This convocation 
has been called to confer the relevant degrees upon the, upon the candidates who have been certified to be worthy of the same. Let the candidates stand forward and take the oath. Thank you, sir. I request our registrar to administer the oath to the students of the graduating class that shall guide them throughout their lives. The students of the graduating class are requested to rise and take the oath. Graduating students, please repeat after me. I promise to work for a better world where science and technology are used in socially responsible ways. I will not use my education for any purpose intended to harm human beings or the environment. Throughout my career, I will consider the ethical implications of my work before I take action. Even when the demands placed upon me may be great, I promise to do my alma mater proud by abiding by this declaration. Wherever I am, I recognize that individual responsibility is the first step on the path to global well-being. Kindly take a seat. Thank you, sir. I request our director, Professor S. Sadhgopan, to request our chairman, Mr. S. Gopalakrishnan, to accept the students who have qualified for the relevant degrees. Sir, as director, I have the honor of presenting to you the candidates of PhD, Master of Science by Research, Master of Technology, MSc Digital Society, and Integrated MTech Program for the award of degrees, whose names are set out in the list. They have been found qualified for the said degree, to which I pray they may be admitted. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the chairman of the governing board and upon the recommendations of the Senate of International Institute of Information Technology, Bangalore, I admit all the qualified candidates to the relevant degree. Thank you, sir. Mr. S. Gopalakrishnan to distribute the degrees to the graduating PhD students. I request Professor G. N. Srinivasa Prasanna to introduce his PhD student. I invite Abhilasha Aswal to accept the award of the degree of PhD for her work on decision making under uncertainty, uncertainty quantification and relational algebra of polytopes and convex uncertainty sets, applications to supply chain and big data. I request Professor Josna Bapat to introduce her PhD student. I invite Gadeshwar Shweta Bhimrao to accept the award of degree of PhD for her work on modulation recognition over AWGN and generalized fading channels using higher order moments on cumulants. Professor Punai Chai was her co-supervisor. I request Professor Madhav Rao to introduce his PhD student. I invite uh, Sita Konda Madhubadan to accept the award of degree of PhD for her work on parameter importance based methods for variation aware analog yield optimization. Professor Srinath Naidu is the co supervisor. I request Professor Meenakshi D'Souza to introduce her PhD student. 
I invite Rajni Kant Kain to accept the award of degree of PhD for his work on vermilion, verifiable multi-agent framework for dependable and adaptable avionics. Professor Dinesha is the co-advisor. I request Professor V.N. Murli Dara to introduce his PhD students. I invite V. Krishna Shashanka Dara to accept the award of the degree of PhD for his work on towards privacy preserving intuition destruction. I request Professor V. Sridhar to introduce his PhD student. I invite S. Hari Bhaskar to accept the award of degree of PhD for his work on reference architecture for airline passenger satisfaction in changing big data paradigm. Professor Jay Prakash Lalchantani is the co-supervisor. I now request our chairman, Mr. S. Gopal Krishnan, to distribute the degrees to the graduating Master of Science by research students. I request Professor Minakshi D'Souza to introduce her Master of Science by research student. I invite Suravi to accept the award of degree of Master of Science by Research for her work on WCEG of Control Code and Automation Systems. I request Professor Chandrasekhar Ramanathan to introduce his Master of Science by Research student. I invite Lenny T.A. to accept the award of degree of Master of Science by Research for his work on analytics architecture based on edge intelligent and smart agents for industrial IoT applications. I request Professor V. Sridhar to introduce his Master of Science by Research student. I invite Nanda Kishore K.N. to accept the award of degree of Master of Science by Research for his work on design of a quality of service framework for digital platforms. Professor T.K. Srikant is the co-supervisor. I request Professor Subhajit Singh to introduce his Master of Science by Research student. I invite Sridharshini D to accept the, the award of degree of Master of Science by Research for her work on analog front end, analog front end for ultrasound imaging systems. I request Professor Devabrita Das to introduce his Master of Science by Research student. I invite Sunita Katare to accept the award of degree of Master of Science by Research for her work on improved voice call performance in tactical military networks by means of differential variety and variable M2 size. Professor Joshna Bapat is co-supervisor of this work. I now request our chairman, Mr. S. Gopal Krishnan, to distribute the degrees to the graduating MTech students. I request the registrar to read the names of students graduating with a degree in MTech in, in information technology. Anshuman Dwedi. K. Shuranjani Abhijit M. Abhishek Joshi Abhishek
हरदिति बघेल प्रताप सिंह शिंदगे आकाश गोविंद राव शिवाजी अमल मिश्रा अमन जैन अमर प्रकाश मिश्रा
So Shiva has mentioned using student representatives, one or two students in a class as point person. I think that's what many people are doing nowadays. Um, and I think it works really well for most faculty members to share links and things with one person. What else? Okay. What about other things that we can do? Okay. So I want to kind of walk you through a few netiquettes or online safety etiquettes at this time. Um, I think with regards to communicating online, thinking twice before sending something, right? Um, understanding that whatever you share, sometimes even things like feedback can um, A, be misinterpreted and once it's online, it, it's not something that you can take back, right? Um, I know sometimes in wanting to give feedback, um, I recently heard this from a, a student at a, at a college, right? Um, he was... He or she was in a Zoom class and someone else in um, a faculty member had asked the student a question, um, one of the other one of his classmates, and this classmate of his was not able to respond. Um, so the faculty member got very upset with the student and said some very hurtful things to the student um, in front of the entire batch on a Zoom class. And uh, the entire recording, the session was recorded, right? Um, so not only did students have access to that recording of this faculty member saying um, not so very nice things and at times using certain abusive words within that speech as well, but also understanding that that's something that can be shared very easily with um, anybody across the globe for that matter, right? So to remember that whenever we're communicating in online mediums, whether, it, whether it's in a Zoom call, whether we're sending messages, emails, whatever it is, that those are things that are not going to go away. Um, and to remember that when we do share our thoughts, opinions, all of these things, right? Um, respecting, I think the other thing is to respect the time and bandwidth of others. So I think I'm sure most of us are not doing this, but to also just be cognizant of it, right? Whether it's with our students or with others around us to not overshare, not um, share messages, videos, uh, attachments when they might not be welcome, being cognizant of that as well, whether it's in the groups and other places as well. A right? uh, couple of last things, um, to be mindful of the language we use, not send messages again that can be threatening. I think Professor Minakshi shared earlier when students kind of have done that with her and I think that's something that we need to also be aware, especially when we are working with things like timelines um, and guidelines, right? That there are deadlines that students have to meet. So um, at a time, especially when non-verbal language is fairly missing, we might be sending a message to a student, we might be responding to an email, and that can sometimes be misinterpreted as being threatening, um, especially when the student might not be able to pick up on the tone in which we are conveying something, right? Um, again, formal writing, I think, is something that's very important. We've talked a little bit about that, that sometimes things like WhatsApp can become very informal. So it's important that uh, you kind of maintain that convention of writing and convention of using formal, appropriate language when we are um, approaching students especially. Um, and kind of helps keep that boundary concrete. Um, last but not the least, I think, expecting and respecting other people's privacy. Right. So not using technology to share rumors, to pass on personal information without the other person's consent. Um, it could be things that you've heard from other students that you just want to get. Like, so I think this doesn't happen as much at an institution level, but I have heard of this happening at a school level, especially where faculty members, teachers have found out something from one student. They've tried to cross check with another. Um, it has not always gone the right, right way. So refraining from sharing of information or rumors as well within uh, some of those networks that you are maintaining at this time becomes very important. Um, so as I mentioned, just to mention, there is a large influence on everything of the huge economic impacts of COVID-19. Sometimes we may have to inform students of early changes on employment possibilities 
I suppose all does not apply. Right. I understand, Srinivas, that uh, things are very dynamic right now, right? And I think technology is helping with that um, to a great extent. Having said that, I think there is an importance to uh, it is important to consider what mediums we use for what, right? So if I know or if I tell my student that hey, um, there is an employment opportunity coming up, do you think it's all right if I WhatsApp you? Or um, asking them that you, what would be the easiest way to communicate to you over the next couple of hours? Um, they have the option of telling you that, sir, could you message me, right? Or could you drop me a WhatsApp uh, or text on WhatsApp rather than saying that you know um, this is what I'm going to do. I think going with that approach that certain things should be restricted um, to emails, certain things should be restricted. WhatsApp and calls only when it is an emergency and giving them the option of reaching out. So I'll share uh, something that I know I use for myself. There is an application called Calendly, right? I'll type that into the chat box as well. I spelled that wrong. Um, Calendly allows you to set up slots for yourself. So I know of a lot of um, faculty members in the US and all who have done this thing of setting up office hours, right? So they have um, office hours, say, twice a week, three times a week, where they block themselves off for two hours. They're online, they're available, students can come and talk to them, right? Calendly allows you to book, say, 15-minute slots with uh, each person. It creates slots for you, you send a link to them, and they will be able to click on it and find time to talk to you. You can set up the appointments proactively, give them that time that this is when you can reach out to me. Um, and, you know, they can kind of take that forward from there instead of being open to that vulnerability that people can reach out to you whenever they feel like or share whatever they feel. It's also okay to think of how you are protecting yourself at this time um, and kind of, you know, be cognizant of those things as well. Um, so I think I'll end on that note um, to kind of keep in mind how you're not only staying safe in the virtual world for yourself, but also keeping in mind you know, the safety of your students as well. Um, do let me know if you have any questions. We, uh, so Shiva has mentioned that we tried one such experiment by giving phone numbers to students. Coordinators, wardens, placement office were all available, but it flopped. Okay. That's interesting to know that um, you've tried that, but students haven't necessarily taken that up. Um, so Manoj, will, my colleague, will also be sharing a feedback link in a little bit. So do um, kind of share your feedback and your input so that we can create better content um, and you know, develop it for you guys in a better way um, so that it meets you, your needs as well. Um, so I see that Srinivas has shared there are other aspects where you are developing technology and being half a colleague and uh, then it is quite different. Uh, major research universities have to develop technology, right? I understand, Srinivas, that uh, there are a lot of limitations, right? It is, it's definitely not a perfect system. Um, and how, and show it works in practical situations and timelines governed by outside agencies. True, true, I agree. I think it's a learning curve for all of us, right? We're all adapting to this. We're all figuring out how to go about this, um, making it viable for ourselves, make it viable for our students, keep all the work going. Um, one of the things, I don't know how if you guys have faced this, but one thing that I often hear from research scholars, I recently did a session with 100, um, 120 research scholars from a specific institute um, in India where they only do research, right? Uh, most of them were away, only a handful of them had chosen to stay back on campus. One of the things that many of them had shared is that over the last three months we've had such a setback to our research we don't even know where to pick up there's so much of a backlog we don't know how we're going to catch up and compete with the rest of the world at this time um, there's a lot going on it is changing a lot of us might be feeling that we're falling behind a lot of us are still trying to figure out figure out how to play catch up or keep at the same pace at, at which we were earlier um, I think it's important to kind of remember that while we're learning, safety is paramount, right? Um, safety for ourselves, safety for our students becomes very essential to ensure that work will keep happening, but we should also 
not try to bridge into that area where boundaries are getting crossed and things can be misinterpreted. Um, so to ensure that also is equally essential. Um, so Rika has shared that should we have a similar session with student groups as well, especially research scholars. I think we are planning on it. Um, hopefully, Professor Manebi Minakshi can give us a little bit more insight into that. Yeah, I think we are planning for these sessions. We'll do research scholars, then master students, then UG students. Thank you, Thank you so much, everyone, for joining into this in in this conversation today. Um, I do think that it is. A difficult time, I know we're learning each day how to make this better. Do think of also some of the ways that you are kind of communicating the language you're using, the position you hold, um, and how to kind of offer your students the opportunity to be okay with saying yes and no to you from time to time. Thank you. Thank you, Puryati, for the amazing session. So, uh, guys, uh, I'm also uh, giving you the link for the future plan. Please do uh, give in your annual seat plan. Thank you everyone.